Hello and welcome to the Six Star Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Aveline Clark, and you're about to listen to another incredible episode with an amazing human all about how they are making a difference in the world using their passion, their purpose, and the alignment of their genius. Because I believe that we make the greatest impact in our life when we combine our passion with our purpose and our genius. That's where the magic happens. This conversation is going to be good because they always are. There's so much to gain from these. They're beautiful, they're inspiring, and I invite you to open up to see the possibilities of what you can do in your life too. Enjoy. And my next guest is the wonderful, brilliant Hirsch Rafoon. He's a voice brand or a brand voice expert, but there's so much more to Hirsch. And this conversation brings out far more than just talking about messaging and branding. You know, he's got this wonderful zany, you know, history to him. He's a, a you know, stand-up comedian. Uh, he's written uh, scripts for films. He's been a creative director. He's run PR firms and, and agencies. And what's what I loved about this conversation, he talked about the uh, I guess that transitory phase of COVID and how he then was able to step back and really look within and figure out some really deep, important things about himself and who he was and, and then bring that out to the world in the most purposeful way. And since then, he's been, he's created a new podcast. Um, he's got a book coming out next year in 2024 called Selling the Truth. And he's just an all around beautiful guy. It's a wonderful conversation. L absolutely love it. He's got some great advice for anybody and everybody about tapping into our truth and how we can start to find our own voice when we speak to the world about what we do. So enjoy this one with Hirsch Rippoon. Hello, welcome to the show, Hirsch. It is so lovely to see you again. How are you today? I'm great, Aveline. It's great to see you. Um, I'm excited for our conversation, uh, precisely because we don't know exactly where it will, where it will mm. lead. Oh, it's a magical mystery tour, uh, of the six star variety. So thank you for showing up for joining me. I'm, I'm My excited. Pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> well, let's get started. I would love to get to know you a little bit more. So could you tell us whereabouts you are in the world? I am in Iowa city. Iowa, in the uh, heartland of the United States of America, um, we are. Uh, you know, it's it's. I have a unique trajectory in that I was born in Miami, lived in New York for many years, moved to California, uh, met my wife in California, and then we moved back here to her home state uh, to be near family and uh, raise our our daughters around family. But it's it's like literally living living you know, in the farmland where I never would have expected to, to be. So I love that you've had, you've had, you know, you experienced all the different colors, I suppose, of the US. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, which is very cool. I think it is. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. And there's a whole conversation around that, but let me, let me ask you now, who do you serve and how do you serve them? So my my people, as I say it, are um, you know consultants and entrepreneurs, uh, executives, but um, but they all care very deeply about their personal brand, and so my mission is to help them coalesce around who they really are, and. Because I like I like to say it's not about what you who you tell people you are, it's about who you are and how you say it, and um, and that's what I that's what I help them them do. And sometimes it's fun because they're trying to figure out who they are and what they're offering, and um, and then it becomes about well how do we how do we present that to your to your audience. And, and that's so important. And I think every listener uh, will realize the importance of that. They've been through it. Everyone's got a message. Everyone's got to present themselves. And, and we're going to 
get stu- stuck into more of that later, which I'm excited about. I, I always ask my guests about their journey, Hirsch, because for me, journeys are so important. It's, it's, it's part of life. It's, it's how we connect and engage. It's how we learn from others and about ourselves. So I'm fascinated to learn about the journey that you've been on that's brought you to where you are today to be doing this work for these people. Yeah, I, I know, you know, many of us never, never imagined that we would be in a certain place. It's just, it's not, it's not part of, you know, planning your career or your journey isn't, uh, isn't really uh, practical because we, the life takes us in all kinds of different directions. I thought when I was younger that my journey would lead me to, uh, to be an entertainer. I, I, I thought that was the sum total of my, of what I had to offer, you know, that I would, that I would, uh, uh, be a comedian or an actor or, or possibly a screenwriter. And I did those, I actually did those, those things, but I did them in, in, I did them the way I do everything, which is in a little bit different way, you know, and I, when I got to New York, um, I was, it didn't appeal to me for some reason to be an actor, like a typical actor and just be a waiter and do the, and do the acting and do all that. I, um, I went to, to film school, to school at uh, school of visual arts in New York. And I met people there who worked in advertising and I wanted to explore advertising, but, um, but I didn't want to do it the way everybody else was doing it. So I thought, oh, well, I'm not going to become a copywriter. Uh, um, even though I'm a writer, I'll, I'll become a, uh, a rep, like a sales rep for directors. And then I'll be able to understand how, uh, how branded entertainment essentially is made and I'll be closer to the action, you know? Um, and in the meantime, I was writing screenplays. I was doing stand up comedy. Um, I was freelance copywriting and so I was like a walking creative identity crisis because because I whatever it was I I I was doing it, you know, um, and that was that was a, a interesting way to go about it. But it was it was the reasoning behind that was more accidental. Like I got, had gotten married very young, started having kids. It didn't make sense to go on the road and be a stand-up comic. It also made sense to have a job that was more or less reliable, um, like something in advertising that I was doing. But also, I had these dreams of still being an entertainer, being a, a, a writer or a or a comedian or something of that nature. And so those things kind of stayed with me so the performance aspect hadn't yet manifested in terms of where was what was i going to do i just turned down this opportunity essentially to tour as a comedian so what am i going to do with that energy and um and that's how i ended up in podcasting because i was invited to host a, a podcast a group of podcasters were essentially engaged in podcasting as a business and they were and they were they came across me and said uh well you know we don't have any podcasters who are who are funny or focusing in on comedy uh, or have anything to do with comedy would you like to do a podcast that has something to do with that and i said well this was right in the middle of the pandemic and so i was like well people need comedy to survive like I had started an, this is how they found me. I had started an Instagram channel called uh, Three Times Daily Comedy, where I was just filming myself and my kids and my dog, you know, on a doing funny, silly things to get through the day. Uh, it could have been like an art project. It could have been making pizza. It could be just silly walking the dog, just having crazy ruminations about the world. And I said, well, I would like to do a podcast called Truth Tastes Funny about surviving and thriving in a chaotic world. 
And, um, and of course I had never really, you know, thought of what the business implication might be for, you know, I had a PR firm. I had a, at that point, a sneaker marketing firm, but all that business was on hold because of the pandemic. And because I was living in the Midwest and, you know, in Iowa city, it's not like my overhead was outrageous. Like it would have been in California. So I didn't have the pressure of, I have to generate, you know, tons and tons of money every month because in California, you would have to just to live in Los Angeles. You couldn't, a pandemic can't even stop you because you have to keep something going. You got to keep, keep, gen so with that little kind of breather, I was able to say, well, okay, yeah, let me just do this podcast. I'll do as much business as I can to s sustain myself, but I'll, but I'll, I'll kind of, I'll develop this pot, this human interest podcast, human interest comedy podcast. And I, and I, and it took off and it started to have a nice listenership and good reviews and good engagements, but no, no money, at, no real business, you know, relevance. Then I was like, okay, well, the business version would be yes brand, which is kind of a play on the, um, on the yes and rule of improv, where you you accept an offer that's being given you by your scene partner and you build on it. And I thought, oh, that might be fun because I know branding, I know advertising, I'll talk to brand owners and we'll have fun with their identities. And maybe I'll get clients, maybe I'll get clients out of it uh, or sponsors or, or, or something. And, um, and that, work to a certain extent, except I was like, Oh, well, I don't know what kind of clients I, I want now after the pandemic. Do I, do I want to work with the same people exactly, or do I want to reinvent myself? And I think, um, you know, that allowed me to just reinvent myself on air in a way and become, uh, you know, tap into the expertise that I'd accumulated over a couple of decades in, in the advertising industry and public relations and writing and having done now a couple of movies as, as a screenwriter and having done all this stuff as a comedian. And so I, I realized that the, the common thread is actually truth is actually being, being gen, not just genuine about yourself, but working with clients who want to be really sincere and genuine, but aren't sure exactly how to package that. And so that's where I came up with selling the truth, which is the mantra, but it's also a, the book that I'm writing. And it's also the, it's the core value of, you know, all of my podcasts, all of my business as a, as a consultant, as a creative, um, selling the truth is really the spine, is really the uh, the central uh, core of my of my being. So that that ended up becoming, you know, really like kind of finding my finding my purpose, helping people sell the truth, you know, to the audience that they're wanting to reach and and quite often that's connected to their business obviously but um but it really is a personal branding um pursuit i think for a lot of people they're like what is a personal brand what what am i even doing what am i doing what we all ended up feeling after the you know pandemic was what are we doing what are we doing here what's the purpose you know and uh, and that's where selling the truth lent itself to message therapy, which I realized was what I had been doing all all along. I had been I had been providing people a therapeutic means of examining their brand and then helping them put that into the best and most uh, impactful package. And that's it. Ab, that's all it is. <laughs> that's the simple that's the the simple story oh what a great story i'm fascinated and 
I, I just love this this kaleidoscope of, you know, the the comedy, the acting, the screenwriting, the PR, like being in this creative space of creating something, a a, yeah. a, a story, a narrative, something to look at, the visual. That's what you've been doing all along. And like you said, uh, uh, and what I love is what you said at the end there is about that the was the noticing the theme or, or the common thread yeah. of truth of truth. And when did you figure that out? Like, when did it become clear? Um, I would, I would say probably about a year ago, probably a year ago, uh, was, and it was, it was a, it was not an immediate, like a light bulb or a light switch. You know, it was the first step, and and this all is during the you know pandemic, that this is all kind of coalescing, and I think the first part was, uh, you know, trying to improve my, you know, I had taken a peak performance course called Zero to Dangerous, which is really fantastic. I don't know if you've read uh, the the guy who created is a guy named Stephen Kotler. And, um, and, uh, he wrote a book called the art of impossible, um, which is really great. And I, I, I signed up for the course. I read the book and it, that kind of led me into meditating, you know, meditating stuff, taking stock and being mindful and all of that. And then that, you know, segued into the podcasting so that when I came into the podcasting, I had a a very kind of spiritual, almost mindset about it. Um, and I think that set the stage, you know, when you open your mind, you relax your mind a little bit, that's where the truth starts to show up because you're not, you're not consciously obscuring it. And, um, and once, once that happened, I realized, oh, I do love branding. I do love working with people on their brand voice and on their messages and all of that. I'm not doing that as a substitute for entertainment. I'm doing that because that's really what my calling was all along. And that's why I didn't exclusively and, and tenaciously pursue that entertainment, those entertainment goals to the exclusion of family, to the exclusion of, of commitments and other things. That's why I, that's why I didn't quite do those things. That's why I didn't go on the road. That's why I didn't, that's why I didn't do all that was because that wasn't really my calling. And then the, 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 the truth tastes funny and the selling the truth and the, you know, the, the, comedy experience, you know, comedy is all about truth. Comedy is about, you know, about, you know, marrying the truth with enough, uh, you know, irony and humor to make it digestible. Um, and so all of those things seem to really align very effortlessly to the point where I didn't feel like I even wanted to do regular stand-up comedy anymore. Like now I was like, oh, now I want to write the book and I want to go tour the book and talk about the book and talk about that stuff. And yeah, that'll be funny. And those presentations will be uh, peppered with humor, but I, I don't, I, I don't have an appetite for the, just the straight up stand up comedy anymore. How, in how interesting. I, and I just want to hone in on this. It sounds like quite a pivotal part of the journey for you where you did something different, which was you went and did this course with Steve Kotler and you learned the mindfulness techniques, you slowed the mind down, you know, like you said, yeah. you weren't obstructed. And my own experiences, trainings and, and other guests, you know, who I've had on the show, who one, in, in fact, who teaches entrepreneurs, senior people all about this um, and, and does, it, it does it so well which has been really insightfully instructive for, instructing for me. But what I'm hearing is that that allowed you the perspective. You, you were able to sort of 
look at everything from a different through a different lens without stuffing your mind which which is what we do in our very busy social media like you know the world yeah. around us uh, you know environment you and and you were able to see who you really were would that be yeah. would that be right yeah well said yeah that's mm. that's it and if you didn't do that if you didn't go down that path where would you see that you would be today potentially uh i think that that i would feel i would feel much less powerful i think i would feel like it, whatever happens to me defines my my existence in other words if i get a bunch of clients and i'm doing the you know i have my little agency and i we get a bunch of clients then we'll have a great year if we don't we'll have a, a crappy year you know if uh if there's a pandemic we'll you know we'll wait it out uh and it'll we'll go underground you know um and i think that that what has happened is uh you know i've recognized the power that e that, that we each have to uh to take matters into our own hands to a great extent i mean there's obviously lots of in the world that we cannot in any way control but our experience and what we do with ourselves and what we commit to and how we prioritize things uh and one of those is how much work we do of the kind of work that we want to do is really up to us you know um and that's very comforting because not feeling powerless is probably the worst part of everything. You know, we feeling like there's nothing we can do. And, and the more, you know, and I have five kids. So the more, you know, the, in very ranging in age, you know, uh, from nine to 31. So, you know, when, when, when they feel powerless about something, it really gives me a sense of, okay, let's really examine that. Let's really examine what I don't have a choice means, or, or I have to, or I can't, you know, let's just explore what all those things mean, because really, is it true? You know, and that was part of it was wanting them to see in me, the power of choice, right? That, you know, for better or worse, you make mistakes. I mean, obviously people, you know, we, we fall down and we, you know, we try a thing and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work like we thought it might, but it does get us to the next, that next rock, right? You know, we're hopping along and, you know, we don't know where, we don't know where all those rocks lead, but the idea is, we're not sit, sitting there waiting for something to pick us up and take us somewhere. You know, we're, we're going, we're going from one place to the next. What you've just described, Hirsch, is some really powerful things. And I hope the listeners understand how powerful it is. And it, it's life changing, like literally by mm -hmm. having that new, perspective and understanding about the power of ourselves through our mind and and like you said we do we always have choice and now you get the opportunity to teach your children through your own example which is beautiful and so so important I think as a parent you know what do we want for our children we want them to yeah. be better versions of themselves and um, you know we don't, we don't want to see them go through similar things that we went through, right? We want to arm right. them with, with examples and, and ways to, to get ahead for themselves. So it, it sounds like it's been a enlightening and an empowering time for you and exciting with, yeah. especially on the work front. And not, and not all, you know, and I think it's important to, to say this and not all good or successful or happy 
I say that because I think that that's another part of really understanding all of this is like leaning into those those things that are frustrating because I think that you know that's like a lifelong thing I don't I mean I know I see people who are pretty zen, zen and they you know they're good they're good with the you know the bit tough situations and things but um but I think it's just a a journey part of that journey to be like yeah this 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 uh this sucks this sucks right now and feeling like there's a there's a there beyond it you know there's there's something that we can and it's it's in and pain and all of this stuff because the world has been you know there hasn't i mean most likely the world has never been perfect <laughs> but um you know in the past you know seven or eight years there's been a lot of really really tough stuff that has happened and a lot of really ugly stuff that that seems now almost um it's almost it's almost easier to be to be angry and to be hateful than it than it ever was which is which is interesting like why has it gotten so easy to be hateful as though that's like that's more excusable but i think i think what what happens is it's like we're like kids we're like children children will test boundaries and see what they can get away with the best kid you know will test boundaries the best soul you know will test boundaries you know and um and that's what that's what our job as parents is to be to be that fence around the craziness so that they feel safe you know with with some kind of you know boundaries but um but i think the human species is really pushing the boundaries of 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 everything to see to like see see what it's all about see what's there see what is and you know what you could say it probably will it probably will have very negative consequences but that's that's what humans do we push those those bound we test those boundaries and sometimes to our just to our real dissatisfaction <laughs> And, you know, through this, like you say, said earlier, it, it, what's important is being honest. Like, this is the truth. You yeah. know, life is not, you know, a box of chocolates every day. Of course not. That's yeah. not life. And, and you being this creator and uh, this amazing, I, I just see you as a, a, a creator, but a, but a creator that brings out truth and um, yeah, thanks. of course, yeah. this is, this is what you've discovered and, and used throughout your, your career and your creative journey. I, and I think that's why I'm resonating so strongly with everything that you're saying. And I, and I really warm to this because I'm a truth seeker myself, like uh, on a deep level. And I think most humans are, I think, you, you know, you can't be innately, you, you know, you can't ignore the fact that we do want the truth. Some people yeah. are more solidly attuned to that than others. You know, I've, one of my sons is uh, such a truth seeker in that, and he's only 12, that if he sees an injustice, he'll be like harshly adversely affected by it. You know, if there's a lie yeah. or there's a, and good on him, you know, <laughs> but yeah. maybe, maybe I need to um, get him to watch part of your podcast and, uh, help him to, you know, find the lighter side, you know, the, the, the comedic side of, yeah, that, yeah. of the truth. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and that, and that, that does help by the way, because, because there are, there are people who take injustice very personally, you know, who, 
who are so empathetic to the pain of others that the injustice feels personal. And, uh, and the same way it's hard for us to laugh at ourselves when we fall down or laugh at ourselves when, when we're uh, being foolish, um, it's hard to laugh at pain. You know, it's hard to laugh at, laugh at that, at that stuff. And, you know, but I, but I do feel like it's almost a, a, uh, you know, a holistic prescription to, um, to be able to, 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 to swallow pain and, and suffering, you know. So Hirsch, I was, Reflecting on what you said around the, the time of the pandemic and how for you it was a time of reflection and looking at why you were doing the things you were doing. And, you know, do you see that that was a collective activity of introspection? Did others also look at themselves and question, why am I doing this? Because we had that this pause, didn't we, in our lives to stop and, and take stock because we were forced to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I felt it was, it was happening to everyone. I just felt it was being experienced differently, but it was this kind of collective pause where, um, you know, it's like when, when, a when there's a national holiday or something and nobody's working that day. And so, you don't have to feel like you're missing anything because nobody's working. And I think because everybody had this kind of forced pause, we had no choice but to but to think about it. And did we want to resume? Like if we had our choice, would we resume exactly where we left off? And in my view, I was like, I just did I just didn't feel like resuming where I left off, was that attractive a, an option? And I felt like, okay, well now, not only, not only do we have this pause, but we, we, the time has gone by. So it's not like a pause where you don't age and nothing's happened. So it was kind of a situation where it was like, okay, well, I'm glad I've made good use of this time, but what am I going to do now? You know, uh, and you know how like where so where there was a sense of well, I'm not. This is we're all going to die. <laughs> we're all going to die. Like this is we're all going to have this COVID thing and die. And like we might as well just have a have a drink and and and. and but it was it very quickly turned to like. Okay, well, we're gonna find we're gonna find a solution to this problem, but all these other things are not going away. So we, I felt more determined to make stuff count and to like I like my partner who I have this this little sneaker marketing agency with. He and I started a nonprofit during that time because we were like okay well we're, we we want to do something creative we want to uh you know do something business oriented but we don't want to do the same old thing and so we revived this idea of a uh, of a streetwear brand called the kosher brand which was dedicated to inclusivity and and equity and um, and diversity and kindness, and we say, okay, well, let's let's just start that brand, you know. And we did. We started that brand. We created, um, you know, streetwear that had the "it's all good" kind of vibe when and tagline. Wear kindly was like the tag that was on all of the product and all of that. We did billboards in in LA, and we. We started this nonprofit. The, the The brand itself was a for profit brand, but the but it gave us this chance to start a nonprofit called the Keep It Kosher Project, which helped uh, provide street artists with uh, materials and space 
to paint message of messages of of kindness and inspiration and that never would have happened had had the had the pandemic not occurred because we wouldn't have had time to develop it we wanted to develop it years before we just didn't have time and so here we developed it and we had the opportunity to do it and now lo and behold there is a time in uh society where there is a lot of uh there is a lot of hate there is a lot of intolerance and a lot of uh you know like bound up energy and all of this kind of stuff and so the time is really important for that nonprofit and that brand to kind of step up and say okay well let's work together and um, let's have positive uh messaging that we can come up with for our future and uh one of the guests that i had on uh truth takes funny um uh you know happened to also have a nonprofit that was um that was a a, a suicide prevention um organization called uh, uh called uh, world jenny's day which took place um october 10th the same day as uh world mental health awareness and um and for the second year in a row we sponsored uh panels where art street artists came and created uh beautiful representations of mental health awareness and uh, suicide prevention and that was all you know facilitated one thing by the other right had we not done the uh the the streetwear brand the kosher brand we wouldn't have done the nonprofit, the keep it kosher project had the pandemic not happened i wouldn't have done the the truth taste funny podcast and then i would not have met uh janetta who is the creator of that of that uh movement and then had that all come together and have artists come and paint on these walls and so um you know all of those things just fell into place and it's no uh coincidence in my opinion that those are all very heart-centered endeavors you know that those are all kind of aligned with the idea of finding your truth finding your goodness and your kindness and do having purposeful uh you know business endeavors and and other things stepping away from uh from the uh the inclination that you might have to be angry or self-serving or you know frustrated and try to figure out how do you turn that into something positive and and loving um how do you turn fear into love it's not necessarily turning hate into love mm. hate is just a Hate is just a, a byproduct of fear. Yeah. Fear turns into hate if it isn't, you know, dealt with. Mm. Mm. I love that. Wow. How how interesting. And I'm so grateful that you shared all that with, with us, uh, with me. Sure. And yeah. hopefully we'll have the links to those those brands and things on the show notes below so people can check them out. You know, yeah. what a what a cool thing that you've created there. Love it. Love it. Um I, and, and obviously my listeners are all about purpose and, and looking at things differently, doing business differently, and everything that you're saying is exactly that, which just is just so great. I'm very grateful for you and, and what you've been sharing. Um, I've got a couple of questions. I always like to ask my guests, you know, what does being six star mean to you? Yeah. Um, well, uh you know, when I was, when I was, uh, when I was starting to work with clients in this kind of selling the truth message therapy world environment, um, you know, I was thinking, oh, well, who, who do I want to work with? You know, uh, do you want to work with six figure clients or personal brands seven figure and you know what what is their aspiration and so i started saying to them at first i was trying to put a number on it well what do you want to are you a seven figure brand or you want to be an eight figure brand or are you and then i was like no they want to be next figure 
uh, success stories. So the figure can be a number or an impact or a milestone, but they are trying to get to that next figure. And when when I heard the six star thing, I thought this. I thought the same thing. It isn't an exponential level of uh, of self celebration of some kind of you know of of I have achieved X. It's really that it's beyond uh, the system, beyond the rating system, you know? Um, and so, uh, so that's what I think of. And I think it's a great aspiration because it isn't holding yourself back and it isn't ignoring the way that success or uh, quality makes us feel, achievements make us feel. But it's taking it into the uh, the next level of whatever we thought we could achieve, and I think that that's you know if you if you shoot for the next level of what you thought you could possibly achieve, then you know you're bound to to do something good, you know do something great, right? If you're worried about this kind of how do I get to, you know, how do I get from A to B, you know, you could, a lot of things could happen and maybe, maybe B isn't really your destination. But if you're like, well, I just want to go beyond Z. I just want to go, I don't know where, then, then, you know, you're on a, you're on some kind of good, some kind of good journey. So that's what it, that's what it means to me. Yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah. I love that. Yeah. What a great answer. That's very cool. Hirsch, what would you say your superpower is? Uh, I think it's it's communicating. I think I think communication is is my superpower, um, and it just takes on different forms, you know. And that's what I've come to learn is that you know you could say, well, my my superpower is entertaining people, but really. What is entertaining people is communicating. What is sitting down and working through a, a problem with one of your kids? It's communicating. What is helping a client figure out how to talk about themselves? That's communicating. So writing writing a book is communicating. Writing a movie is communicating. Um, drawing a picture or uh, having a conversation. So I think the ability to, to, to communicate um with another human being is is the thing that i get the most joy from that's well yeah that's makes a perfect sense given everything that you've done and what you're doing (laughs) i i i want to just delve into more of the the current expression of your work right this truth messaging and ask if we can just delve into this, why is it so important for a business to use truth in their messaging? Um, Well, again, I think if we think about it from the, from the inside out, you know, branding, let's say from the inside out, instead of, instead of I need all these people to believe this thing, or I need people to buy this thing. If we start with why we're doing it, why we're selling it, why we're making it. There's some real reason in there. There's some real thing in there. That's why we, why we do it. And not only is it just the easiest thing to, to build on because it's real, it's the thing that's going to give our audience the most, the most joy and the most benefit. So the truth, selling the truth, isn't like a second best option, right? You know, it's, it's the most rich and uh, deep thing that we can, that we can draw on. So, um, and I don't know that I, that I even thought of it that way at first, I thought of it as we don't have a choice, you know, the truth is what we're given, right? That's where the truth tastes funny came from, you know, yeah, it tastes a little funny, but it's what we have. So we might as well learn to digest it and laugh at it. And that's all true. But with selling the truth, it really is that 
this is this is who we are and we should figure it out you know before we brand ourselves we should know ourselves you know figure out who we are and then celebrate it and share it and make it make it as accessible and useful as we possibly can how does someone start this process if for someone who maybe hasn't done this before you know they they've just they've got a business maybe they could be in business for a number of years maybe they're very good at what they're doing but they're crap at messaging with marketing but they just <laughs> they've got a book they've got a couple of books you know they've got some um Frank Kern and some, you know, maybe a couple of other gurus on the shelf and they use like all the different catch lines. And so, and, and let's just say they've, they've experienced a lot of failures because it just isn't seemingly working for them. Where do they yeah. start? It's, it's funny that you mention you know, uh, Frank and the books and because the fact is you could, you know, you could read, you could read those books in the frame of mind when, something's off and you're a little misguided or misdirected and none of that stuff will will work for you you know um and so the the place to start ag again is hap like happiness where where does where what is it that makes you happy you know and some some coaches will say oh you know do your do the thing that makes you most the most happy and then don't do the other stuff or try to not have to do the other stuff and i get what they're saying but the other stuff is going to is going to have to be a part of it so there's going to be the stuff you don't like as much and you're still going to have to do it you know but the stuff that you really really love that comes really easily to you what is the most fulfilling thing that comes naturally that doesn't require a tremendous amount of effort? And you have to really examine that and then, and then say, are you doing that in your business? Is that part of what you're doing? Is it even part of it? You know, and it isn't like, well, I love tennis. I love playing tennis. Therefore, my business should be around tennis. It would be okay, what do you love about tennis? What do you feel when you're playing tennis? What is that emotion? And where does that emotion come from? And where else can you get that, that feeling, right? And maybe you're just not seeing it in the, in the things that you're doing. And then you start to think about, ah, the, okay, so that's the, that's my, that's the truth about where I'm at. That's what I really love. That's what my passion is. That's what I want to see more of in the world. And then go back and read those books because those books are going to actually have, probably have the answers in them. You know, I had someone uh, mention the book uh, Essentialism. I, can't, I don't remember who, I don't remember who wrote it, but they said to me, oh, you should, you should read Essentialism. And, and I was, because of this and that, it's going to help you solve this and that problem. And I was like, oh, that sounds so familiar. And I went through my Amazon orders and I saw that in 2015, I ordered the book Essentialism. And I remember now I started to read it and I never read it. I couldn't get through it. And now I'm so excited. I have to, of course, find it. But now I'm so excited to like go and read it because now I have the clarity and the 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 right the right skew to appreciate what's what's in there um and i think that that's what a lot of people go through they're they're not they're not ready for the for everything yet but they may have tried or dabbled or you know and if you think about it wow i already did the, i already bought the book you know before i might have said oh what a waste i bought the book never read it what, what a stupid, what a waste of, you know, probably $19. What a waste. You know, now I'm like, oh, no, I was, I actually had the foresight to buy it. I just wasn't ready to read it. <laughs> so, so, so I think a lot of us have to, you know, we have to get to where we're ready for all mm. those, all that stuff that could be so useful. Mm. But, and, and as you, when you said the book name, 
the, the, the cover image flashed in my mind. And I'm sure I've bought the book and I'm pretty sure it's in my catalogue too. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I fully agree. I've, I bought books 15, 10, 15 years ago that it took, you know, 10 years to read because I wasn't ready. Yeah, and I remember, I remember being on a plane after I bought this book and reading, you know, and hearing and seeing this thing that was like, do what's most essential and all this stuff. And at the time I was probably like, what? the hell is this i you know i've got this agency i'm going to asia i gotta do this i gotta do this thing and that so obvious of course i never read it but something was 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 triggering it in my mind that somebody recommended it or something and so mm -hmm. i had the right idea i just was you yeah. know not ready for it you know we're not ready yeah. so it sounds to me like the advice that you would give to anybody any business owner entrepreneur is to first go within. Is yeah. that right? Oh, for sure. For sure. Mm. And if you go and if you look within and it feels silly or it feels weird or it feels, you know, then do it do it anyway. But keep in mind there's gonna probably be a time when you're you're gonna be glad that you you were introspective, even if it felt awkward or ill ill suited, you know, to to that kind of exploration. I love that advice and, and that perspective, uh, certainly because, you know, having been through something similar on my journey, but also when I see others around me do that introspection, it just changes everything, everything. It's almost hard to describe how it will feel on the other side. But suffice yeah. to say that it's it, it is very transformational it's like looking at the world in a different way or feeling in a, the world in a different way yeah mm. that's been my experience and it's exciting um hirsch as we're coming to a close or, or near to a close i want to ask how can people get in touch with you you've mentioned a few brands businesses right I mean, yeah <laughs> well there's a board game <laughs> called Hirsch's journey and you have to get you have to start at the beginning you have to start in Miami you go through all these different things and all the different business names and all the different company names and then you you take a left at at truth tastes funny and then you you take a right at at the kosher brand and then you jump into the pool of meditation and um no mm -hmm. so actually I have made it easy I have made it pretty easy in that you can go to hirschrepoon, my name, com, and you and and that is one thing actually that I you know it's like people say oh you don't need a website and in some ways you don't you really don't in a way for business need a website it's so laborious to like push people to go to the website and all this stuff you don't but what it did for me was it allowed me to take a deep breath at the end of this section of the journey and say, oh, you know, I know where everything goes now. I know where, I know where the clutter can kind of be, be organized a little bit. So, um, and there's obviously contact pages and all that stuff, but at hirschrepoon.com, um, you can find whatever you are interested in and what I do. So you can find comedy, you can find the, um, you can find the, the podcasts and you can find, uh, the services that I, that I provide, you know, professionally. And, um, and so, uh, so I'm, I'm quite proud of that now because I think it, 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 it is a representation of, of who I am in a way that doesn't feel like it's all over the place. So that's, that's, that's a nice, nice accomplishment, I think. Yeah, well done. I'm looking forward to Thanks. checking it out because I haven't looked yeah, at the hirschraffoon.com. So yeah, yeah I'll out. be going there. I will. And for our listeners, please go check it out. Um, parting, parting tidbit. I'd love to get like a little gold nugget, something that you want to leave our audience with before we say goodbye. Have I, have I given you nothing? <laughs> have I given you nothing <laughs> so far? I don't know why I threw the, the British accent in there, but it just, that's from the comedy days. 
That's from the comedy. Okay, so you know what? There's a reason. There's always a reason for those things. So why did that little voice come out? Probably because because it's a throwback to, you know, when I started doing stand-up comedy, this is the tidbit. When I started doing stand-up comedy uh, years ago, I used to do impressions and voices and characters and and accents and things. And it always, it felt great doing it, but it, but it never really felt complete. And uh, what I realized was I used to do the accents when I was out socializing, I would meet people and I would do the accents. And I, obviously I was hiding a little bit behind those characters and voices. And when I felt most liberated, was when I stopped doing those accents and my standup was much more like this, just very conversational, talking about stuff and, you know, going into a character or, or whatever it was. And so, and so the tidbit, the little, the little nugget for people is, um, you know, focus on being yourself and see how rewarding that is before you try to be anything else because we can you know when we're in a room like when we when we for example we learn how to behave in certain situations we know if we go to a really fancy dinner party party we're not supposed to drop things you know uh, china on the floor we're not supposed to eat with our hands all that stuff but if we don't learn who we are first and we don't and we don't learn to be ourselves and love ourselves for who we are all we're doing is following rules and following protocols. And I think it's a really good experiment to say, am I being myself in this situation? Am I, if I'm not, who, who is myself and, and how can I do more of that? And where can I be myself? Maybe if I'm not myself in all these situations, maybe these are not the best environments for me. So, um, so if there's a, a tidbit in there somewhere, be yourself as simple as it sounds is a great experiment, you know, because there are so many uh, situations that call upon us to be something else. Well, uh, that is gold. You know, <laughs> this is not just a podcast talking about people's businesses or being purposeful. This is like, you know, it goes beyond that, right? It, it yeah. really does. I, I, I'm so grateful for your creativity, your heart, your your um, the impact that you're making in the world, Hirsch, and how you're bringing yourself to the world, and you know having these kind of conversations that show that we are multi-dimensional people, beings, right? We, it's not we can't just be it. It's not just about business. We're humans doing work for others, in service of others, serving the world, and creating impacts and and positive impacts, making a difference. And that's what you're doing. And I just want to honor you for that. And thank you for everything that you've shared today. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you. Ab. It's been, it's been a wonderful, wonderful time with you as well. Yeah. Likewise. Well, I look forward to um, delving into your stuff and I encourage our listeners to check out the website. And if, if you feel called, get in touch with Hirsch as well. And, yeah, thank you so much, Hirsch. You have a lovely day. I'll be in touch soon. You too. Thanks. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I did in hosting it. So please rate, review, and leave us a comment below. And finally, also, I'd love you to share it with a friend, someone who you think would get something positive from it, someone who would enjoy it. You know, we're here for each other, so please share the love. If you'd like to reach out and talk to me and learn about how you can make a bigger difference in the world by serving the ideal clients that you have with purpose, please get in contact over at journeypoint.com.au. See you on the next episode of Six Star Leaders Podcast.